Can this 20 euro Pico flash card beat the EverDrive? The answer probably will not surprise you. But it's got some cool features that I'm going to go over in this video. But before we get started guys, if you like this sort of thing, please think about liking, subscribing, commenting and all that fun stuff. And let's see what this wee thing is all about. So this Pico flash cart is powered by the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now the Raspberry Pi Pico is one of the kind of newer microcontroller boards for Raspberry Pi. They're cheap, they're plentiful, they're kind of everywhere. And loads of people are coming up with loads of really, really cool ideas for them. Implementing them into like N64s to make HDMI connections. Loads of other stuff. I can't think of the mean, but there's loads of other things. Now, the board doesn't come complete like it is here. The wee button that I've added oh, this side here. This chip, Jesus Christ, here. This capacitor here. And then this wire here. Doesn't it come assembled? It comes just the board and then just the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, this one is a 16 megabyte flash, if I remember rightly. There are projects for this, you can make them at home where it's like 2 megabyte, but that's not really big enough for anything really. So there is some size compatibility issues with this Pico boot, but there is still a good chunk of the N64 library you can theoretically put on this thing. So, I'll show you how we put the file on, how to flash it, and then how to put a ROM on it. So this project comes from K Beckman. He was the guy behind the Pico DVI for the N64. So here I'm just going to kind of go over quickly how to create the UF2, which is a flashable ROM you need for the Pico. So I'll throw a link down below and all the steps are written here. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to hold down your boot button for your Pico. You're going to plug it in. It's going to register. Now I've kind of got used to kind of flash nuking it, which is just wiping it. Once that's done, it kind of re reconnects. Then you toss over the, the, the PAL UF2. So that's just to kind of format the Pico. And then here we're going to use the test ROM that comes with the download. So all the tests have kind of come back and everything's looking good. So what I'm going to do here is follow the same steps and I'm going to actually install Duke Nukem 64 on this flash cart. Following the same steps that I've done before. Flash Nukem, putting over the PAL ROM and then flashing the Duke Nukem UF2. So let's see how we go on here. Now, I've been yelled at this for the past, but for the sake of time, I had to kind of fast forward the video here. It's running practically like a genuine cart. There's no stuttering, there's no issues. For the time being, you're going to have to take my word for it, but I would highly recommend that you do do this yourself, because it does kind of open some doors for you. And now to get onto some of the cool features that I spoke about in the start of the video. This is actually a Game Boy emulator running on the N64, and this is Link's Awakening. And I know, I'm sorry, I've fast forwarded again, but again, for the sake of time, I've just got to fast forward through it. So the emulator here itself, it does let you kind of modify it slightly with different colours and palettes and stuff like that, which is all great. And, well, this is real time here now, so the... The emulator itself, it runs Game Boy Color as well. The only issue that I had was actually saving. It didn't save to the to the cartridge, even though the flash the flash save, where the fuck it's called, was actually working fine. It, it just didn't. So that may be something I'm messing up on. But again, just something to be aware of. Now again, there is a functional NES emulator. Now for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work for my N64. I've seen it operate on other people's videos, but I just kept getting thrown this error message time and time again. Now, this is what I was really, really looking forward to, is trying out some of these homebrews and some of these demakes and flashing them to the cartridge and actually playing on proper hardware. And now this is actually the Portal demake running on the N64 itself. I love the original Portal game, Portal game. I think it's fantastic. And the N64 remake is amazing, and playing it on actual hardware, it's fantastic. Now, I've done this actually with a few different games. I had to try some of the ROM hacks and everything like that. And here, this is Dragon Ball Kart 64. <laughs> now, I'm not the biggest Dragon Ball fan, but I'm fucking a massive Mario fan. And I just had to try this because it's it's all the same kind of... Um, all the, all the same racetracks but different characters. I think this was harder. Either it's harder or I've gotten worse. But um, this was just something I had to try. I saw it and I was like, I need to see if this works. And it did. And I'm delighted.
Now, I am going to apologise for the music in advance here, but I, I just have to have it. So this is a ROM hack of GoldenEye. This is called Rickroll I 64 where they basically just changed a lot of the, uh, the character sprites in the music and everything like that. And when I saw this, you know, for the meme value, I just have to play it. So again, I'm going to just kind of blast through it. And there's a wee cheeky secret kind of at the end of this gameplay, which I was... <laughs> In the opening credits, you saw it, but I wasn't expecting it. And then when it came up, I was like, ha, that's funny. But here we go. Let's watch some of this future. So it was actually running in to the N64 trified Gerard Butler. And it's when he shouts this line, I absolutely lost my shit. When I heard that, I just absolutely fucking burst out laughing. But... Let's move on. So this was just a handy wee kind of stick test and run that I downloaded just to kind of test how good the stick is on the N64. And it works with kind of any controller that's attached to the N64. I'll refer back to my other video. But this was just handy just to kind of see kind of where you are. And it's interesting. Now, this is where I kind of went down a bit of a rabbit hole. And I was on GitHub just kind of exploring. And I found this app called transfer boy and basically what this does is it plays it basically reads your game boy games through your transfer pack only the n64 now this seems to more be like a proof of concept just now as you can see it is running at like fucking 10 frames a second but um as a kind of beginner thing running it straight off the game boy i got so excited because obviously the N64 never really had an official Game Boy player. The SNES did, the GameCube did, but the N64 didn't. It. So this was just one of the things that was just kind of a wee, a wee tease and I hope this keeps getting worked on because it's an absolutely fantastic idea. There we go, everybody. That is the Pico Kart 64 for the N64. Now, like you saw, I did have some kind of troubles with some of the games. I don't know why I couldn't get them to boot. It seemed a wee bit kind of, you know, temperamental. But when it came to the, the Game Boy stuff and then some of the other cool, like, homebrew stuff you could run, I think this is really cool. Is it better than an EverDrive? By no means. By no means is it better than an EverDrive. But the fact it's only €20 Euro and it's, it's fairly versatile. The Game Boy stuff was cool, like I said, the homebrew stuff was cool, and it just gives you some options, like some of the ROMs and stuff like that I was loading there, you know, I wouldn't be able to play any other way on physical hardware, so I found it super helpful. That's really it, to be honest, super handy dandy wee thing, I'm glad I got it. I would highly recommend it, but by no means replaces the EverDrive. I'm going to start rambling now, guys, please like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff, and uh, see you in the next one. Toodaloo!